So in this question, there's a lot going on, but let's take a look at the two planes that are intersecting. We have the first plane given by this equation, which we have kind of drawn here and labeled P1. And then we have the second plane given by this equation, and we've labeled that P2. And these two planes are crossing each other, and they cross each other to form a line of intersection. Now, what we're going to do is try to figure out a vector that is running parallel to that line. We're going to end up calling that vector A. And to find vector A, what we do is we take the cross product of each plane's normal vector. So let's slow that down a little bit. Let's look at plane one. You can take a look at this equation and in particular, take a look at the coefficients of the variables. And we can see that the normal vector for the first plane is simply the values of those direction numbers. So we have one comma two comma three. Those are the coefficients of the variables. We can do the same thing with the second plane and we can get its normal vector as well. We just look at the coefficients of the variables. So we have two, negative one, and then positive one. So what we are going to do is find the cross product of those two normal vectors. And what that's going to do is it's going to produce a third vector that runs parallel to that line of intersection. It's a little bit hard to draw that, but that vector right there is going to be running parallel to the line of intersection, and it is obtained by doing the cross product of the two normal vectors. So let's go ahead and set up this cross product to find this vector A. And when you do a cross product, you basically just write your first vector in the first row. So we'll have one, two, three, and then the second vector in the second row, two, negative one, positive one. Often you'll see this I, J, and K to indicate the X, Y, and Z direction. So we're doing a cross product to find this vector A. And to do that, what I like to do is cross off the first column, and that gives me a little two by two determinant. So to compute that, we just do some cross multiplication. We're going to have two times one, which is two. We're going to have three times negative one, which is negative three. And then we end up subtracting those values, which we will do in a moment. So that's going to be for the I hat direction or the X direction. Let's cover up the second column. We'll get another two by two determinant. We'll have one times one, which is one, and then two times three, which is six. We'll end up subtracting those. And then be careful here because for this middle component of vector A, you want to make sure you negate that. Every time you're doing a cross product, you negate that middle component. So that's great for the J hat or J direction. Now we're going to cover up the third column and we'll have one times negative one, which is negative one, two times two, which is four, and then we'll end up subtracting those. So let's clean this up to get vector A. We have two minus negative three, so we have five. One minus six is negative five, but then we negate that to get five, and then negative one minus four is negative five. So this is a vector that is running parallel to that line of intersection. Now that line of intersection also lies on the plane whose equation we're trying to determine. So, so here is that plane, and here would be that line of intersection of the other two planes. And we just figured out a vector that is running parallel to that line. So this vector lies on our plane, in other words. So we're gonna write down this vector accordingly. We could even put a little arrowhead on it to show that it is a vector. We also know a point on this plane. Let's go ahead and label that. The question gave us the coordinates of that point. It was three, one, four. Pretty good so far, but we still have a bit of a problem here. We have a vector that is running parallel to our plane, but what we really want is a vector that is perpendicular to our plane. This is the so-called normal vector. We need that in order to get the complete equation of our plane. We don't have that yet, so now we have to think about a way of getting that normal vector. And it turns out that what we need to do next is find another point here, another point on the plane. And that point is going to also lie on the line that is formed by the intersection of the previous two planes. So we go back and take a look at the previous two planes. We have that line of intersection. 
we're looking for a point on that line of intersection. We're just going to call that point P0. Now, how do we find that point on the line of intersection of two planes? Well, we can go back and look at the equations of the two planes. And what we can do to find a point on the line of intersection is we're going to take those equations and we're just going to set z equal to 0. You don't have to choose 0 for z. You can choose any number you want, but it turns out it's just easier to do so. So let's set that up next. So here are the equations of the two planes. Remember, we're letting z equal 0, and that's going to just basically knock out this term and knock out this term. We'll make sure we remember that z is equal to 0. And now we have a system of equations for which we can solve x and y. So we'll clean out that, and we're going to do perhaps an elimination method here to solve for x. We could multiply this equation by 2, and that's going to transform it into 4x minus 2y equals negative 6. And then we'll recopy the first equation right underneath it. So x plus 2y is equal to 1. We go ahead and add those equations together. We get 5x is equal to negative 5, and then we can see that x would equal negative 1. So we have our x, we have our z, we just need our y. So we can go back to this first equation. We'll plug in negative 1 for x. This gives us negative 1 plus 2y equals 1. Let's add 1 to both sides, and then divide both sides by 2. We get y is equal to 1. So we have a point now. We're calling it p naught. It's on the line of intersection of the two planes. It has the coordinates negative 1, comma 1, comma 0. But the key is that it's not only on the line of intersection of the planes, but it's on the plane whose equation we're looking for. So let's go back to our picture. And so that point that we marked in blue now has coordinates negative 1, 1, 0. Great, but we still don't have the normal vector. Remember, that's really ultimately what we need to get the equation of this plane. But now look, we have two points that lie on the plane. We have the point that was given to us originally, and we have the point whose coordinates we just determined. It was the point that lied on that line of intersection of the two planes. Well, we can use those two points to come up with a new vector that lies on our plane. We're going to draw this vector kind of going this way. It's getting a little crowded here, but that's going to be vector b. And remember, you can easily find the vector representation of a vector passing through two points because you can label the coordinates of the first point, x1, y1, and z1. You can label the coordinates of the second point, x2, y2, z2. Again, my apologies for the clutter here. And then you just subtract the second set of coordinates by the first set of the coordinates. So for example, for x, we'll have negative 1 minus 3. For y, we'll have positive 1 minus 1. And then for z, we'll have 0 minus 4. So this gives us the vector representation of vector b. We're going to have negative 4, comma, 0, negative 4. OK, great. So what? Well, here comes the power of what we've been doing. We have two vectors now. We have vector a, which we found earlier. That is parallel to our plane. We have vector b, which is also parallel to our plane. We want the normal vector, so ask yourself, well, how can I take these two parallel vectors, excuse me, those two vectors that are parallel to the plane, vector A and vector B, how can I use those to find that normal vector? And of course, you're going to do a cross product. We're going to cross vector A and vector B. That gives us a third vector that runs perpendicular to those two vectors, as well as perpendicular to our plane. So let's go ahead and set up the cross product of vectors A and B. And we'll run through the cross product. This will give us our normal vector. We'll go a little quicker this time. Cross this column off. We'll do 5 times negative 4, which is negative 20. 0 minus negative 5 is, excuse me, 0 times negative 5 is 0. So we'll subtract. Now we'll cover up the k column here, like so. So 5 times negative 4, negative 4 times negative 5. And we'll subtract those. And then don't forget that for that middle one, you've got to negate it. So let's just make a little room there so we can negate it. And then finally, we'll cover up the k column here. There we go. And we have 5 times 0. And then negative 4 times 5. Negative 20. And then we'll subtract those. So you'll end up adding right there. So here comes our normal vector. At long last, we have a normal vector equal to negative 20, 40, 20. 
And now we have all the data that we need at long last to get the equation of the plane because we can choose either point. Why don't we just pick the 3, 1, 4. You could also do the negative 1, 1, 0. But we'll pick 3, 1, 4 to be the point on our plane. So that's going to be our point, 3, 1, 4. We're going to plug those coordinates along with this normal vector into the following equation of a plane. And just to review, the point will be plugged in for the x naught, y naught, and z naught positions. So that's going to end up being here, there, and there. And then the normal vector is plugged in for the a, b, c, the direction numbers of that normal vector in those spots right there. So let's go ahead and plug the information in. There we have it. This is a perfectly acceptable answer, but we may wish to simplify it. For instance, we could divide everything by 20. We'll divide this term this term, this term, even 0 by 20. This will simplify. We'll have negative 1 times x minus 3 plus 2 times y minus 1 plus 1 times z minus 4 is equal to 0. Let's distribute this negative 1 along with the 2 and this positive 1. We are getting there. So now we have negative 1x plus 3 plus 2y minus 2 plus z minus 4 is equal to 0. We can combine the constants. 3 minus 2 minus 4 is a minus 3. So now we have negative 1x plus 2y plus 1z minus 3 is equal to 0. We could add that 3 to the other side. So negative 1x plus 2y plus 1z is equal to positive 3. This is perfectly fine. But for those purists who do not like a negative leading coefficient, you can divide everybody at long last by negative 1. So here we go. The final answer is x minus 2y minus 1z is equal to negative 3. That is the equation of the plane that contains the given point as well as the line of intersection of the two other planes. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it, but please do not feel obligated to do so. I appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.